Hi, Laura. Thank you for your questions. These are great. These are all looking at the law of conservation of mass and how we can apply that law uh, when we're problem solving. So your first question was uh, number 27 in the exercise set for chapter 5. And for this one, we're looking at the compound magnesium fluoride. And we know that when you have a compound, its ratios of one element to the other in the compound, those ratios are always going to be set or stay the same. So if we are given the masses for magnesium and fluorine in one sample of magnesium fluoride, we can use that to um, problem solve how much uh, of each element is in a second sample uh, given at least one piece of information. So when you're doing this, what you have to look at is putting magnesium and the fluorine into a ratio, which means that we're just going to make it into a fraction. And then we are going to try and find the equivalent fraction for sample number two. And this is what it looks like. So first of all, we're going to put this and make it into a fraction or a ratio. So we're going to have 1.65 kilograms of magnesium on top and 2.57 kilograms of fluorine on the bottom. So that's magnesium on the top and fluorine on the bottom. And it doesn't matter which one goes on top and which one goes on the bottom. So you could have put fluorine on the top or magnesium and magnesium on the bottom, it wouldn't make a difference. The main thing is that when you create your second fraction, your second ratio, you want to make sure that you do the same uh, the same setup. So if you put magnesium on the top, you want to make sure that it goes on the top for the second one. So that's 1.32 kilograms. And our fluorine's on the bottom, so it's our unknown. So I'm just going to leave that as X. Now to solve for X, we're going to set this up as an equivalent fraction problem. So I'm going to take that first fraction that we did, 1.65 over 2.57. That's my first fraction, also known as a ratio. And I'm going to make it equivalent to my sample 2 ratio, which is 1.32 over x. When you're working with equivalent ratios or equivalent fractions, in order to solve for x, we're going to cross multiply, which means we're going to take 2.57 and we're going to multiply it by 1.32. And that uh, gives us 3.3924. I'm going to keep all my decimals and then I can round off at the end. So 2.57 times 1.32 equals 3.3924. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply 1.65 times x. And that should also equal 3.3924. So once you do the crossover of your knowns, so my 2.57 times 1.32 equals 3.3924, we know that the product on the other cross multiply must also equal this as well. So I can write that algebraically. I can say 1.65 times x is equal to 3.3924. And then I can divide both sides by 1.65. That cancels out the 1.65 on this side, leaving me with my x. So x is going to be equal to 3.3924 divided by 1.65 which is equal to 2.056 kilograms, and that is the mass of the fluorine in sample two. So just to break down this problem again, once you know the masses for one sample, you can use that ratio or that fraction to figure out the unknown mass of one of the elements in the compound for a second sample. 
and you get uh, a ratio that looks like this, you're going to make them equivalent. So 1.65 divided by 2.57 is equal to 1.32 over x. And then we use cross multiplication to figure out a product. And then that product is going to help us find the unknown. And uh, that's how you set up problems like number 27. So next I'm going to show you uh, how to do question number 29. So I'm going to set that up and I'll be right back. Okay, here we are in question number 29. And for question 29, we have the compound uh, dinitrogen oxide, so two nitrogens to one oxygen. And for the table, we're given the mass, sometimes we're given the mass of the compound. Uh, we're given sometimes the mass of nitrogen and sometimes the mass of oxygen. Now for sample A, we have all three uh, masses given, which is great. Based on this sample here, we can find the ratios of nitrogen to oxygen in uh, the compound and use that information to fill in the empty spots. Now with this one, I'm not going to make equivalent fractions. Um, oh, well, I could. I could do that one for for D. Why not do that? We'll do that for D because um, we can use equivalent. We, here's one fraction that we have. We could use equivalent fractions to find this answer out and then we can add those together to get the whole amount that we have here. You'll notice that 1.82 grams plus 1.03 grams gives us 2.85 grams. So when we add these together, our check will be that it uh, that the mass equivalent is for the whole compound because not uh, nitrogen and oxygen cannot be destroyed when we're creating this compound. So let's use equivalent fractions for this one down here. We could also use equivalent fractions for this one as well. We just couldn't do it for this one because for sample B, we need at least one of these in order to do the equivalent fractions. So equivalent fractions are going to work for um, C and D, but just not for B. So we can go ahead and set that up. So let's go ahead and take a sample C uh, and set up an equivalent fraction. So first of all, we're going to use the ratio of nitrogen to oxygen in sample one to set up our first equivalent fraction. I'm just gonna go ahead and put nitrogen on top. Again, it doesn't matter what you put on top as long as you continue with that in your next fraction. So for C, we don't know what nitrogen is, so that's gonna be give us the variable on top and 1.35 is going to be the oxygen on the bottom. Now what we're going to do is cross multiply 1.82 times 1.35 to give us that product. And that comes out to 2.457 grams. And then that means that when you cross multiply 1.03 times x, that should also equal 2.457 grams as well. So to set up the expression or the equation algebraically, it'd be 1.03 times x is equal to 2.457 grams. I'm going to divide each side by 1.03. That crosses out, cancels out 1.03 on the x side. And then 2.457 divided by 1.03 is equal to 2.385 grams. So uh, our nitrogen here, whoops, <laughs> that's not my erase. My nitrogen should be 2.38, oh, I guess we're only going to two decimal places. So it's going to be 2.39, I'm going to round that up, grams for our nitrogen. And then we can add these two numbers to get, to, together <laughs> to get the total mass of our dinitrogen oxide here. 
So 2.39 grams of nitrogen plus 1.35 grams of oxygen is going to give us 3.74 grams altogether of our dinitrogen oxide. Uh, for sample D, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to, again, set up our equivalent ratio, equivalent fraction. So this is uh, from our sample A, 1.82 grams of nitrogen over 1.03 grams of oxygen is going to be equivalent to, this time we'll have 1.11 grams of nitrogen on top from here over X as we are trying to find the amount of oxygen. Cross multiply 1.03 times 1.11 is equal to, give myself some room here, 1.1433 grams. And then when I do 1.82 times x, when I multiply these two together, that's the product that those should be equal to. Divide each side by 1.82, cancels that out, 0.82. So x is equal to 0 0.628 or 0 0.63 grams. So that's what oxygen, the mass of oxygen in sample D is equal to. Then I'm going to add these together and that's going to be my the mass of my sample all together, 1.74 grams. So we used equivalent fractions to figure out samples C and D. For sample B, it's going to be a little bit different because we are missing both nitrogen and oxygen. So I'm going to do that on uh, another slide um, so that I can show you how that works out. So for sample B, equivalent fractions aren't going to work because we are missing at least one of these for information, so we can't set up the equivalent fractions. But what we can do is, given the information from sample A, we can figure out what percentage of dinitrogen oxide is nitrogen and what percentage of dinitrogen oxide is oxygen and use those percentages to help us solve for sample B. So for percentage of nitrogen in dinitrogen ox uh, oxide, what we do is we take the mass of nitrogen divided by the total mass of the compound and then multiply by 100 to get our percentage. Very much like you would do if you were finding what your percentage is on a test. You would take uh, how much you got right over the total mark times by 100 and that gives you your percentage. So if 1.82 grams of nitrogen are in a 2.85 gram sample that gives us 0 0.6385 times 100 to turn that decimal into a percentage. And that gives us 63.86% nitrogen. So 63.86% of our compound N2O is going to be nitrogen. That means that uh, the if we subtract that amount from 100, it means that whoop, we would have, so 100 subtract 63.86 means that 36.14% of the sample will be oxygen. So I just subtracted uh, this amount from 100 to get that. So together, they make up 100%. But just to show you, I could also find the percentage of oxygen in the same way. 1.03 grams over the total amount, 2.85 times 100 is going to be 1.03. 
divided by 2.85 gives me times 100 equals 36.14% oxygen. So same, two different ways to get the second amount, um, but when you add them together, they will equal 100. So how can we use these percentages to figure out the unknown amounts of nitrogen and oxygen in a 4.55 gram sample? Well, what we're going to do is for a mass of nitrogen, we are going to take our percentage of 63.86% but we're going to take it in its decimal form because we never use the percent number, we always use the decimal form of a percent and we're going to multiply that by the total amount that we know which is 4.55 grams. In doing that we will find out the mass of nitrogen because what this statement says is 0.6386 of 4.55. Multiplication, another word for multiplication is of. So 63% of 4.55 is going to be, so 0.6386 times 4.55, that gives me 2.91. Point nine one grams of nitrogen and then for oxygen we have 0 0.3614 times our total amount so 0.3614 times 4.55 is equal to 1.64 grams and when we add these totals together we should equal 4.55 grams, the total amount. So 1.64 plus 2.91, and we get 4.55. So those answers do work out. Whoops. So a little bit different way to get to the answer for uh, sample B. When you can't use equivalent fractions, definitely go with uh, using percents. So I hope this helps um, clarify 27 and 29 and gives you some skills to solve further problems in these areas. As always, thank you for your questions. Um, they're awesome and keep them coming. Bye for now.